How we doing, guys? Uh, my name's Alex Greeno. I'm the head football coach at Wald Lake Western High School, going into my third season there. Uh, just want to say thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk today. I will be speaking on why the even front defense is still effective. Um, it seems there's been a max ex exodus to the odd front or tough front. Uh, everybody wants to clog B gaps, spill things outside, um, which is great and is very effective. But I am going to explain why the even front can accomplish a lot of that and, and there's no need to change. So, a little introduction. I was born and raised in Dearborn, Michigan. Graduated from Dearborn High School in 2005. Um, we made the semifinals for the first time in school history that year. It was pretty exciting. We lost to Orchard Lake St. Mary's 6-0 in, in a good game. After that, I went up to Northern Michigan University, played strong safety outside linebacker for four years. Um, from 2005 to 2009. GA'd for a couple years after that before uh, coming down to Lincoln Park where I started with my dad. Um, helped turn around an Owen 66 program. We made the playoffs three years later. Went out to South Lyon, got to coach with uh, Coach Henson out there. Great staff, great kids. Um, before getting the opportunity to take the Wald Lake Western job. Since I've been there, we're 19 and five. We've won two district titles, one regional. Um, one conference title, and uh, hopefully we're, we're back competing for, for some championships again in the fall. So why the exodus to the odd front? Um, obvious reasons, and, and these aren't, you know, these are more my opinion, but we want more athletes on the field to match up with spread option offenses, RPOs, things like that. Um, allows you to bring more exotic pressures. Uh, with more athletes on the field, you can bring people from more places. Um, some, some reasons have been, I've heard, you know, it's, it's tough to find those two big DNs and, and two good D tackles being a three tech and a one tech, which is, which is understandable in, in the current state of, of football. Um, you know, the, the game isn't growing in, in a lot of areas. Hopefully that's starting to change a little bit. But, you know, personnel is, I think, the best reason to make a change if that's why you're going to do it. Um, you know, I think a lot of people change, they'll go to a clinic, they'll see something and they just want to want to run it and it doesn't fit their scheme at, or, or personnel at all rather. So they get into some, some problems. Um, the other thing is, and I can, can say this, i um, calling offense myself in the past and recently, so a lot of people had the 40 figured out. You know, Coach Norduzzi had the 4-3 cover four perfected. Um, a lot of people tried to emulate that and did with great success for many years. Um, but, but things, uh, things have changed and, and they started to learn some of the rules and, and started getting the advantage. So problem, why the 40 works? The problem, more athletes on the field, okay? The solution, stop putting positions in boxes. And what I mean by that is, you know, who's to say what your DN has to look like or what your Sam Backer has to look like? Um, you know, there's some, some great coaches uh, that, that, are, that are starting to, to believe that you know, why not load, load the field with athletes? Um, that's the idea of the 3-4. You know, we, we ended up putting a, a free safety or wide receiver and running back at, at DNs about week four and, and really added an element to our defense. Um, most odd front teams are bringing four, if not five, every play anyway. Speed off the edge or through the A-gap accomplishes the uh, athleticism you want and, and the speed you want. You want to stop teams before they get going. Um, the other thing I was thinking was, People want to bring more exotic pressures, you know, all the Don Brown disciples. We want to attack this and that. Um, that's great. Coach Brown's obviously one of the best to do it. He's one of the best in the games. It works. And uh, I'm not saying not to do that or it's bad, but, you know, I, I don't think you have to go there to accomplish that. You know, the solution in the 40 would be stop blitzing just your linebackers, uh, start bringing some corners and safeties. Kids love it. It adds fun and, and some uh, predictability to your defense, okay? A lot of offenses make a lot of decisions based on how many safeties are middle of the field if it is open or closed. Then the eyes go to an outside linebacker or alley player in any pass or RPO usually. You know, bringing a safety after, after the uh, cadence is starting or, or post snap from where he started or, or bringing a corner or even having automatics based on what they see can really, one, Get, get to a quarterback untouched and surprise him, see pressure from somewhere he's not used to seeing it, and also bring in some safeties or, or secondary into some run support on heavy rundowns can help as well. 4-3 um, versus nickel, okay? You know, thinking about speed and space in the RPO game, 
Defenses also need to have speed and space, right? I can't just be stubborn and say my three, you know, old school All-American corn-fed linebackers are going to be able to stop this RPO game and, and the, the speed option stuff or the spread um, three, four, five wide receivers on the field. So, at, at, you know, ask yourself, what can your will backer do that your strong safety or corner can't do at the high school level? Um, I'm not saying you're starting two corners where you're moving them, but bring your next best athlete on the field, your next best DB. You know, you'd be surprised at what they can do. Um, for those of you that, well, our will has to play the seven sometimes, or this guy's got to be there, or this guy's got to be here. Um, you know, you got to stop thinking like that. You're, you're limiting yourself, and, and you're putting your players in some bad positions probably. Uh, you know, my dad's been doing this forever, my whole life. We did it in high school. You know, I got some of my best friends in school. They couldn't tell you what position they played because they lined up at seven different spots. Um, one of my best friends played six spot positions on the same defense in the semifinals in high school. You know, we, we've kept doing that. Um, I, I've come to realize it's not the norm necessarily everywhere, but when, when you can just teach a kid his responsibility for the week and rep that, and make him understand and show him on film, you're putting your players in a, in a much better position to succeed. And uh, I'll show you this on film in a little bit, okay? A nickel brings an ability to not have a mismatch in man coverage versus a tight end or slot. Uh, you're not looking at the easy giveaway now. It's not a slot. One of the fastest guys on the field matched up with, with a Will linebacker, Sam Backer out there. Um, and, and you can also bring pressure with a lot more speed off the edge. Uh, and and like we ended up doing, putting two athletes at D end. You do that with a nickel. Now you're talking about having a D tackle and, and a nose in, in, on the field and nine athletes flying around with it. So it, it worked out pretty well for us. And I would encourage you to, to get out of that mind frame of this guy's a linebacker, this guy's a D end, this guy's a safety. Hey, where does this guy help us most this week? Let's put him there. Okay? Change the look. You can't change kids, but you can change your schemes. And like I said, the, the number one reason to change would probably be personnel. Um, I'm not a real firm believer in saying that I, I'm a high school coach and I run this scheme. You know, hopefully through development and, and good relationships with your youth programs, you're, you're able to develop the type of kids that fit your scheme. Um, but that's not always the case. So make sure you're, you're able, you, you got an idea of what you want to do. But if you're a, an option team and you don't got a quarterback that, that's much of a threat in the option game or, you know, you're a spread offense, five wide offense, but, but don't have a quarterback that can make all the throws, you know, let, let's start adjusting a little bit. Same thing on defense, right? If I don't got a kid that can play at, at DN and just hold an edge or spill things, but I do got a couple athletes that can bring pressure and, and add some confusion in the backfield, you know, do what's going to benefit you. Okay, stop being predictable. You know your rules, your kids know your rules, and the offense also knew your, knows your rules. Um, especially, you know, in that 4-3, cover four. You know, just about every good offensive coordinator knows how to exploit that in coverage. Um, you know, back backside free access throw, all these colleges are changing how they play trips now because of the easy stuff or the, or the vertical shot to three. You have to be able to adjust. You got to learn, learn as you go, and, and you can't be afraid to change things, okay? Um, some of the different fronts we've used throughout the year, uh, you know, your, your true nickel um, with, with five DBs on the field. That's why I put four, two, five there as well. Uh, the four, four and, and a four, three, and then what we call a bubble, which is pretty, uh, pretty close to a 50, but still athletes out there and, and we don't got to change personnel. So we'll, we'll see that on film as well. And let me get you to huddle. Uh, we'll just start it. Okay, so um, this is against trips. So as you can see here, this is more of our nickel look, okay? Uh, one of our, our DNs that we've had rotating is actually out here right now, it looks like. But we had him and this kid who are on offense. He's a running back and he's a wide receiver. At what time was a quarterback, okay? Um, this kid's an, an all-state wrestler. And then we got our two, two big fellas. Everybody else is, is a pretty good athlete. We're playing a true three versus three up here. Coverage-wise, um, I don't know if I could tell you what coverage we're playing. A lot of times I mix it up. I'm not going to get into to the details of that stuff. But what, what I do as the secondary coach, I'm very, very heavily 
based on tendencies and what we're seeing. Okay, my kids got a pretty good idea what to expect from Kettering here out of this trips look. Um, and, and we're gonna manipulate our coverage to, to make it easier, easiest on ourselves. You know, like the, uh, the snag route that everybody loved forever, the, whether you're going vertical or corner, and then you do the bubble and, and the sit or snag or hunt route, whatever you wanna call it. I mean, we love that because we know how to dictate who your quarterback's throwing. If we wanna throw it to the bubble, we're gonna cover the hitch. If you want to throw it to or the, the snag. If we want you to throw it to the snag, we're going to send someone at the bubble right now, and my safety is just teeing off on it, timing it up, and taking a pick, hopefully the other way. But spread team here, um, I wanted to show you again, since what, what a lot of the three fours are, are, are being, I guess, built for or, or to defend, but a lot of times you'll see that 5-2 look with the stand-ups, um, and you'll see my DNs as, as athletes. I'm not going to take an athlete, tell him to put his hand in the dirt and teach you something completely foreign to him. Hey. You're comfortable like that. You'll see this kid on film lining up with his hands like he's a receiver sometimes. But this is just some of the pressure and some of the speed they're able to bring, okay? And it, and it just changes, changes the game a little bit. We got our speed rusher from the bottom side. That guy up top, as you can see, he's playing a little softer. He knows the other kid's going to be for, flushing him this way. He's the athlete. We're flushing him to the field. This kid's going to roll to the trips. I'm going to stay out here, keep contained. He gets a little too deep. If he just stayed down the line of scrimmage here, we play it darn near perfect. Everybody else is matched up on their guys. And we tell our guys, if you got to cover for very long, we're not doing a good job up front. Okay? Here's just a tight look. Okay. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six. They match us up six on six here. Still able to flush them out of the pocket. Win for the defense, okay? Here's another nickel look. This is where we got our two stand-ups in. Again, running back, wide receiver. Okay, here's our nickel. Um, just kind of our extra guy. We're just disguising. Just bringing that nickel off the edge here. Ends up confusing the slot. We got the back and the slot trying to block our guy. Leaves our free safety completely free to come down. Again, that's just sending speed off the edge, letting the athlete play in space, creating all sorts of confusion. This is a very good Livonia Churchill team. That quarterback's super good. Um, that number five they had is brother number 12. Or no, this might be flushing. Never mind. But as you can see, my DN. It's not putting his hands on anybody. He's just being an athlete, squeezing, breaking down, making an easy tackle, right? And it all start by forcing the, the keep, sending the nickel off the edge. Again, your free safety is unaccounted for. If that was a jet, he's making an open field tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Cover zero look here. Little veer. Get our DN on dive right away. Let our linebackers just walk outside we don't like to move a ton on our defense the less movement the, the better everyone just takes the responsibilities and we're sound dive dive quarterback pitch little slide dn's down there quick athletes out in space Okay, this is our nickel out here where your, your Will linebacker usually would be. Um, he just knows what to expect out of here. The jet motion, he gets past. He's just spot dropping. Quarterback throws it right to him. He's a pretty good athlete. Again, could a linebacker do that? Absolutely. But this kid's faster. He's, he's, he's more athletic than the third linebacker we would have put in. And, and we're a very heavy tendency-based defense. Okay, here, I'm just gonna show you, I'll show you from the tight. Okay, so we got those stand-up guys. You know, this is similar to that 3-4 idea. We want speed, right, coming after the quarterback. Here, we're just gonna twist, send both guys, and, and we get our DN wide receiver through a gap, untouched pretty quick here. Forces a bad throw, linebacker does a good job rerouting this kid, and complete pass. Getting pressure without changing personnel, right? We're in this nickel. We're still getting to the to the quarterback. Trips up top. Okay, these guys are just squeezing hard, right? 
We want to force everything out, just like occupying those B gaps or DN squeeze. As you can see, both my linebackers, he, he's just a free player. Nobody's getting to him. We got everything clogged up up front. Ends up making an easy tackle. That bringing that speed from the edges is, is creates all sorts of chaos. Look how quick they get back there from both sides. Come straight down the line of scrimmage. They don't get deep. They're not getting kicked out or trapped hard. Forces everything between them. If they want to try to go B gap, they got to bounce it outside. To which my linebackers, as you can see, would both be able to scrape inside out. Okay. Got another safety sitting, waiting. His guys stayed in the backfield. So we're in great shape here. Jen, still our nickel look. Okay, here, I'll show you a couple times we bring, we're bring we bringing pressure, right? Okay, it looks like our safety walked over here. We don't bring them this time. Let's our safety float over the top. Quarterback thought the middle of the field was wide open. And it's easy pick. Again, and you'll see on film a few times I got it where we, we send this guy quite a bit based on what, what we're seeing. But with these DNs, I mean, this guy got pretty deep here. Again, that's just an athlete in there. Beats the running back. Quarterback wouldn't have much time to throw that ball. Makes him uncomfortable. He feels that pressure. You know what I mean? He sees that flash of helmet going past him. A lot of stuff we did, depending on the quarterback, was if we just flash low pressure at him, he's going to take his eyes down and start scrambling around. Made life really easy for our DBs. So the whole defense understands that. My DBs are able to play with pretty good confidence because they know they're not expected to cover that long. And if they are, we're not doing something right up front. I don't like the swim move at all. You know, a, a more seasoned running back would have just floored that DN. But again, I'm gonna let him let let him be him. We put him there to be an athlete. I'm not gonna tell an athlete to stop being athletic. Playing tendencies here again. We don't like moving a ton of people. If I can move one guy, we'll call it a day. This is just a good example of the RPO defense, right? This DN's athletic enough to, to squeeze and make that play where your, your prototypical DN might not be that, that quick. Okay, we take the RPO away, force the, get, force the pull read, shuffle squeezed. Easy play. Whether that safety got down here to help on that or not, it's going to be tough to throw that. As you can see from the back, I mean, it's just every gap's filled here. Linebackers downhill right now. We don't ask them to do much based on the situation and pass. He knows I got a gap. We're gap exchanging here. We're shuffle squeezing. Tony was athletic enough to be able to make the play and do both. That's a bonus. Speed kills. Okay, again, nickel look, three versus three to the bottom here. So what we got going, he's the free runner. He, his job is to get depth and force the quarterback this way. As you can see up top, he slow plays a little bit, tries to get his hands, and he's waiting for the quarterback to scramble out there. Bring the linebacker on a delayed blitz, lets the lineman engage. You can see our backer come right through a gap untouched, forces a quick throw. Might otherwise have been an easy completion. But you can see the DN slow playing it for the rush out there or the, the scramble. Tony does a great job getting off his horse down bottom, beats the guy with his hands, should have stayed on his feet, dipped low, low but Oof, he could have just ripped through. Okay, I want to show you this one from the tight. So this is what, you know, drives my point home, where what, what can that linebacker do, Sam or Will, that your nickel can't do? Here, our linebacker recognizes something. Our Mike, great job, senior captain, set the single season tackle record for us this year. 
Okay, him and CJ are communicating. CJ comes in and plays plays B gap as as a DB nickel for us. Reads it right, block down, kick out. He's filling. That is not hard to tell a kid. Okay, you get a football a kid with some sort of football IQ. He doesn't play in the box very often, probably probably hardly. But block down, kick out, go make a play. He walks down, and and our our free safety from last year's making tackles in the B gap. Okay, here, when I, when I talked about exotic pressures and things and automatics, um, Churchill ran, ran a reverse for a touchdown a couple times. I think they ended up throwing the ball off it or something. But I just told my guy, you know, instead of just sitting back here nose picking, if they're going to show you that reverse, if he goes, you go. So we sent our kid on a corner crash here, and whether it was a double reverse or not, nobody picks him up. So he just runs free. And hits this guy from behind on what could have hurt us a little bit because we were late recognizing the wheel. You know, my corner wasn't going to do anything on that play. So, hey, if they're going to do this, go get them. Our kid was fast, as was theirs, but our kid didn't have a ball in his hands, wasn't pulling up to throw. So you can see it from this side. Our DN doesn't do a very good job keeping contained down here. He tries to be a hero. We run the kid down from behind, break the pass up, incompletion. Um, I just wanted to show you some 40. I didn't put much power run stuff on here. I think versus double tighten things, you're almost forced to get into a 50 at times. But when we weren't, this is just how we played our 40. Heavy buck sweep set here down by the goal line. Okay. We went, we went a three and a one, or a, yeah, three and a one. Um, it's an under look without a linebacker walk down. We're trying to chase those guards. DN sitting and squeezing. Linebackers go untouched. Watch from the wide. Oh, wrong player. Nope. Sorry about that. Again, we do not want to move a whole lot. When you have these athletes everywhere, guys, he's pretty similar to him. To him. And and shoot, he's a good corner, but he can play these positions too. Instead of running all the way across all the time, if we can have a guy out here already for the leverage, we can just exchange that way, which is what we did. We were able to keep our safety on, on the play side, number six back there. He recognizes it, comes down. Doesn't need to make the tackle, but he would have been there to help. Here's our nickel coming down for contain out there. He's just playing right in the box. Still got our... Two true D linemen, our two athletes, and our linebackers. Took on the guard, stopped that play, made sure it didn't get any wider. Third down passing situation here. Again, the end up tops playing contain heavy. We're bringing our other two linebackers. Show you from the tight. With, with this guy able to, to get that depth and, and width with that speed, this guy is gone, right? He's starting sliding this way because we've been blitzing A gaps versus empty and stuff, which opens up this gate right here. I think their whole front here goes to their left, and our linebacker just walks in. Yep. Because we've been blitzing A gaps, sending our, our two linebackers through A gaps. This time we stunted our tackles both A gaps, sent our linebackers B gaps. They're untouched, force an early throw. They complete it, I think, but we make a tackle, force them to punt. Still that nickel look. Great play here. So as you can see, we're pretty pretty well mirrored here on both sides. Um, we knew when 81 was here, it was like 99% pass. So our whole team's playing pass. 
Uh, they love levels. So our linebackers right now are told, hey, one of them's doing this, one of them's doing that. Let's get hands on both of them. So it's actually a great pass. Um, our corner just makes a great play. Good, good throw here. Um, but again, that that's tendencies in, in athletes. When you're when you got them speed on the field, right? We're we're trusting our DNs to get our pass rush. They do a great job protecting here. The kid's able to step up and throw. Doesn't work every time, right? Uh, which is why this one is on here. But we did the best we could. Our kids knew who to look for. Our linebackers waiting for him. If this guy does his job right, he's waiting for him to get to the hashes, and our safety's waiting to pick him up in the middle of the field. Good throw. Corner just makes a good play. So here we're just sending a crash, right? And this is just an athlete through B gap. Look how quick our DN to the field gets here, or to the uh, boundary gets here. I mean, he, he's stunting B gap. Got our, our other athlete coming outside. And I keep saying athletes, because, okay, you can call him a DN, you can call this guy an outside backer, but he's 6'2", probably 190 pounds, 185 pounds. Doesn't bench a ton, but yet here he comes. And these balls got to get out quick. First Connor here, this kid from South Lyon, he loved running. So we did a drill all week that was just a contained drill where we kind of start our D-line um, and, and receivers halfway through the route, and we'd, we'd say go. And the D-line's job was to contain him, and, and the DB's job was to try to chase the receivers around best they could. That's why you see our DN at the top. He knows the pressure's coming from the bottom. He's expecting Connor to roll that way if he's going to go anywhere. So he slow plays it up there. He tries to keep him in the pocket. Linebacker makes a great play. Forces him to push. Okay, so right here, typically we don't move, right? You think one, two, three, four, verse one, two, three. Okay, again, we're going tendencies, right? This guy's got nothing to really do. He was sitting there waiting for speed option or power read coming back. When, when, when he knew he had nothing to do, he became a, a primary run player, okay? Our D end up here, let me show you from the right here. He's containing. How, how we said all week, we're, we're making these guys contain. So our, our nickel on the other side or, or safety on the other side or backer on the other side, whatever you want to call him, just folds into his run gap responsibility, okay? This guy, is why we're not outnumbered. We were telling him, if he's throwing this, you're trying to get in the passing lane right now. If he does throw it and you miss the pass, okay, he should be contained. He should be there. We, call, we teach the triangle tackling, right? Everybody fits, and then you're pursuing inside out. So if that guy does try to cut back to the middle at all, you're blowing him up. So, so he knows this guy's going. I'm trying to get to pass. Quarterback's not my job right now. Quarterback doesn't throw it. He ends up running. Bryce puts his foot in the ground, retraces his steps, goes back where he came from, tries to make a play. Good job all the way around. Here it is from the tight again. Bryce gets upfield. He knows he's not going to go the long way and chase this kid. He's ripping back through, retracing his steps, and pursuing. We got more defenders waiting over there than they had blockers. Okay, this is uh, Fenton, I believe. 20 personnel, just a different look than, than the spread we've been getting. Um, same thing, okay, got our athletes standing up. This was kind of our version of, of a 50, so to speak, or as close to an odd front as we got. That was just our extra player. Sending a double crash here, okay. He knows, he just told him, hey, you got outside, I'm crashing. CJ spills it, our nickel, again, taking on a fullback, spilling it. He gets hands on and knows he's playing it soft for contain. CJ spills it out to him. Easy play. And, and that DN, if there was a, a bubble or an RPO, I can't get the tight again, or wide again. A bubble or an RPO, again, the same thing. He's just, he's just pursuing late for the cutback. Okay, here, we, we knew we could get away with anything into the boundary. I tell my safety, we don't need to get way over here. 
there's only so far he can go out. We got a corner out there already anyhow. So he's not going to walk over here and give this blitz away. But, you know, just RPO game purposes, I think if you're hitting the quarterback in the mouth, it's very tough for him to throw passes. And that's what we tried doing, okay? You know, your, your five-yard NCZ, my safety gets there late, makes a tackle for, you know, no gain, which is, which is fine with us. And uh, we sent some pressure to the quarterback. Crashing off the backside as well. Here's that, that 50 look. Remember at the beginning, said change your fronts, right? With, you know, we got literally one, two, three guys that are that are pretty close to interchangeable. So, so we can do a lot with them, okay? Motion looks to how we exchange responsibilities earlier. We just keep the crash on. CJ almost gets a little too deep. We don't want to run that minefield or, or what Coach uh, Brown called running off the cliff. Jari taught me that this off season. We would like him straight down here. But again, when you get athletes there, they, they're able to do some things. Great tackle played by the D tackle as well, which helps. Bringing speed off, that guy knows he has anything between the B gaps. Third and long here, okay, in our nickel. We're just bringing more than they can they can defend with, or block with rather. Sorry. This is your yep. Yeah, I put it on there. Your exotic six man pressure. Everybody talks about. And again, I'm not saying all these guys are are great coverage guys, but. How often are you you're playing a team that has five great wide receivers as well, right? Try to you know who their best players are. We tried putting our best players on their best players and hoping for the best and, and kind of gambling, saying we're getting to the quarterback first. And here we go. Just couldn't block everybody. Our safety is able to play it real soft. He knows the down and distance. Quarterback throws it off his back foot, retreating from the line of scrimmage. He's down on the on the throw. It's fourth and ten. Don't be afraid to go to man sometimes. And then they start, you know, they double teamed our Mike backer. Let him go and let him go and let him go. Okay, we had to run with it this time just for numbers purposes. Bringing our exotic pressure. Okay, this guy knows, hey, my guy's blocking, just similar to how a safety fills on a crack for a corner, right? His responsibility was contained. He got cracked. I am now the contained man. He comes down here very well. And as you can see right here, these guys aren't, these guys aren't backpedaling very hard. Like I said, trust what you see on film. Know the tendencies, right? These guys aren't all going deep. My safety's taking the guy that goes deep. Oops, sorry. But here McKenzie runs over, reads that his guy gets blocked. He goes and takes the contain. Great play by the safety. And that's the same guy that was spilling the fullback and filling B gaps that just broke up that pass. Here's the tight. You know, good adjustment by them. They brought six to, to block our six. Quarterback tried getting out. That's his man, his man's blocking. He's on quarterback now. Okay, again, film, right? Tendencies, trust what you're seeing. Trust what you're seeing, okay? This is a great play by them. They know when that guy moves there, typically this safety is gonna play off, right? And you already got three versus three now. He's running either a five yard out or a 10 yard out based on where the sticks are. We knew that. We walked him down, told him to play his outside shoulder the whole game when he does that. They just ran to the middle. It's an easy touchdown, but they didn't do that, thank God. And then we sent pressure and went and got him. Our guy plays outside shoulder, that guy. He's on the out. Pressure's to the quarterback right now.
And, and this is a guy that had, had played D end earlier. He played that outside backer slash nickel that was coming off the edge. And now he's taking their, their tailback and man coverage. No, this is basically just what I said to remind myself, but we're bringing more than they can block with. And here we come. Does not have time to throw this ball. The ends know that the pressure's coming from inside. As you can see, they both stay wide. My job is to contain the quarterback coach. I don't need a sack. I just need to play my role. Let these two go get them. This is another good adjustment by them. So they got to that sixth guy a different way. Um, you know, we, we were able to, to force a 50-50 ball. We didn't get to the quarterback. You know, in my opinion, 50-50 balls are wins for the defense. I like sure things on offense. Um, and I, I damn sure don't like my quarterback throwing off his back foot. But when you when you got pressure in your face all day, that was such a cheesy pass interference call ball was well underthrown, but oh well. Um, when, when you're getting pressure all day, it, it's tough to stand in there and throw. I don't care who you are. Here we go, same thing, right? They motioned up, trust what you see on film, trust what you see on film. He's outside from the tight. You can see how outside that guy he is. We're, we're on the hash right now. There is nothing in here. But I'm willing to bet my six can get past your five before you throw a touchdown pass. And here we come. Athletes, athletes, look at them DNs, get up field. You ain't getting outside those guys. And everybody else's coverage is mediocre. That's terrible. This is terrible. That kid was open. I mean, this kid just was running his route, but we had that. I mean, he had receivers to throw to. We just, it's not, not easy to do when you're getting chased around, right? We all know that. Okay, change your fronts, right? I, I showed you kind of our version of a 50, one of them, um, our, our nickel, okay? Here's what we call bubble. So this is the kid that was one of the DNs. He played linebacker. Now we got him at our bubble. His job, yeah, I don't really care. His job is reading the center. Whichever way the center blocks, he goes the other way. And, and versus power and gap teams and counter trade teams, sending an athlete that that's a, fires through one of those gaps, really disrupts these pullers okay and just i'll show you these couple clips where i mean there's just kind of chaos in there and this kid this takes some some intestinal fortitude he basically just got his ass kicked for for three quarters of the game and, and did it with a smile on his face sending him now this guy is a true quarterback spy this kid's i think super underrated this is the fenton kid he's awesome but you just slow playing it, being our, our plug, right? Wherever the leak is, you plug it. Linebackers, as you can see, have nobody on them. Watch from the tight. Tony, our, our bubble player, you'll see the center go this way. He's A-gap right now. And, and what do you do? Because if you don't block him, or if you block him, you're not blocking one of the tackles. That's not a look that, that centers and guards get very often. Um, this kid doesn't have to come all the time. If you're doing something else, we're probably not going to do that. But we're trusting what we saw on film. They were in 20 personnel. They were great at counter tray. Center blocked left, or Tony's right. Tony went to his left. Show you again from the tight. And maybe we'll show you from the type. Don't got it from the type for some reason. But you know what? You can call this a 50 if you want. But I'll show you in a couple clips here. This kid runs out and covers the running back man to man. I don't think there's many 50 front D linemen that are going to do that. Let's go to the next one. Again, the bubble here. Center blocked one way. Tony went the other. The end contained. Look at that. One, two, three. 
unblocked guys at the point of attack. It's our free safety at the line of scrimmage. Trust tendencies. Trust what you see on film. Put your guys in a position. What good would he do dropping deep just to make sure, right? Nothing. Let him go make, make tackles. Kids going to play Michigan Tech next year. Still in the bubble here. Looks like some zone read action. Quarterback gave it. Oh, this is going to be too far away. Dang. But, but what's happening here is we're clogging all those gaps. And how I showed you earlier on film, these guys are unblocked. He just makes a, a fundamentally sound inside out tackle, unblocked. This guy spills it because all this, I mean, I, I doubt this is how they wanted it to look on the offensive side. He goes and makes a tackle. This kid, this kid is, is, I would take 10 of them on my team, but he's not super fast, right? He's, he's not super athletic. He's, he's a great downhill player that does what we ask him to do extremely well. Very excited about his senior year. Here, here it is right here. We're in the bubble. Same kid, same personnel, okay? This is what having athletes do. The only two kids that aren't real super great at, well, he's actually a really good athlete, but I mean, that, that are going to go cover somebody are these two. And you got nine athletes. Watch our bubble guy. I'll go take him, man. All right. Now my other linebackers got the green light. They love it. Go get them. Now I got two linemen double teaming my mic, who out of these guys is the smallest dude. Don't tell him I said that, but. It just, it's, it's confusing, right? C creates confusion. Linebacker went unblocked. Play side backer. Back in our bubble. Center played it well there, took Tony. But again, when you only got one back left to block two guys, doesn't work out well. Everybody else is covered. Show you from the tight. This is that tough front look, right? We got B gaps. Tony's got the A gaps. And these guys are soft playing it. <clears throat> Outside contain. Oh, this might be the beginning. Yeah. yeah, I'm back at the top. Um, you know, guys, like, like I said, just to, to recap, a lot of what I showed you, we, we do got some good athletes, but again, know who you're playing, know who, who their good guys are. Um, put your players in position to succeed. You know, I got four guys on film that I just showed you that have played probably five, six positions through the year. Um, if I was to describe what our defense is, I guess what I would call it would be a, a 4 2 4 with, you know, a, an extra player that, that we plug in wherever we need them. You know, start thinking outside the box. Um, don't do just what everybody else is doing. You know, and, and a couple of my pet peeves are, you know, well, well, if or what if they do this? You know, well, that's great, but what have they done, and what are, what are they gonna do? You know, what do you what, what do you what have you seen them do? Trust what you see on film. We don't put hours and hours and hours in on the weekend to guess. At, at least I don't. Um, I, I want those hours to be worth something. So so I come out of there with a pretty good idea. You know, I, I gave a clinic earlier this year on game planning. Um, take their best three formations and their best three plays out of each formation. Uh, coach Ari, one of the best D coordinators I've ever seen. Um, head coach at, at Saginaw Valley for a long time. You know, make a team beat you left-handed. Take away what they're good at. If they can beat us with, with their left hand, they deserve to win. But, but if they're a running team, they're not going to beat us running between the tackles. If they're a passing team, they're not going to beat us throwing the ball everywhere. Make them uncomfortable and use your personnel to the best of your uh, advantage. Um, you might have some guys that, that may not fit any other scheme, but one week they might be the perfect guy. Don't be afraid to give them a try, you know. Take that corner that's that's not athletic enough or, or fast enough to, to get on the field. Put them at nose on a third and long. Put them at DN. Let them go get the guy. Give them fun. 
it, it keeps you, you, you're more guys engaged. Um, it, it gives them more things to do. It gives you different looks on defense, you know, and, and football is supposed to be a fun game. Okay? It's not about, about just categorizing people or putting a, a blank thing. You know, I hate peewee football because if it, it's the biggest kid at, at 10 years old, He's a lineman for the rest of his life, you know, where, where by the time he's 14, he might be the tallest, skinniest kid. So don't, don't feel like you, you have to do what, what everybody's doing. Don't be afraid to, to, to trust and, and do what you, you, you do. Um, but, but ultimately, I just hopefully gave you some, some options and ideas of, of things you can get away with it, with an even front. Um, if anybody needs my, my contact or would like to talk or ask questions, I just love talking if you can't tell. Uh, Wald Lake Western football coach at Gmail would be, I'll type it on here so you guys can see it. Um, you know, if you like, want anything or, or want, want the clinic I did earlier at the, at the Lansing, I'd, I'd love to help you out. Just give me a shout. So just want to thank everybody um, at the MHS FCA and, and, and appreciate the time and, and the uh, opportunity to talk to everybody and hope you guys got something out of it. So. Have a good day.